Hi, this is Roger, thanks for dropping by. As I said, I'm going to water the holy clay pots now, and um, the camera's back to front. There's a good reason for that. I set it up like I normally do, up that end, and then I thought, that's where I do the watering, that's where the clanging goes on. And also, it's in quite deep shade relative to this part of the thing, because the sun's just going across the roof. Well, if I stand here, I'm lit up by the sun, um, and I thought if I hold the plants here, we can have a look at them um, and they'll be lit up. So that's the logic of having a camera at the other end for a change. But it also makes a change, doesn't it? Right, so we're, there's two dendrobiums in holy clay pots, which I'm not going to bother with, um, simply because we've recently looked at them. Sorry, there's only one. The one's on the floor to go. <laughs> we have a hedge now, so... Right, so I'll just get these down in the order they come away simplest. This is the first time I've handled these for over a fortnight. They've been having the sprayer. So, oh, that's the point. There's highly likely to be some scale about. And um, I'm just using that sprayer. That, that's all I do at the moment. I'll have a good go at them in the not too distant future. Right, and what I really wanted to do was this. See, these leaves are warm. Plants are heating up in here. Mind you, I've had the um, humidifier off for a bit and the fan while I've been setting up, so that could be something to do with it. This is the um, apple blossom, and there's a tiny little bit of scale around the base, but not what I'd call an outbreak. So what's going on with this one then? Not a lot. Not a lot. Oh, yes, there are some scale. Around this side, there's lots. So why would they just pick one side over another? Uh, see, the, the problem is with this, if I use the sprayer now, and they're around the base of the pseudo bulbs, when I water, it's going to wash the spray off. So it's not as effective as it, as it could be. But it's better than doing nothing. I need to get some proper treatment going. It's that time of year now. So, uh, so I'm just looking yeah I mean don't know whether you can see that but um, this is the pseudo bulb with the blooms on and I'll try and show you my eyes are tuned to see that you see that leaf changes color as it gets near the base and if you can see it that's why it's just the scale in there basically um, Certainly that one, I think, at the moment. They've gone for the one with the blooms on. Anyway, I will get a sprayer down in the um, leaf joints and round the base. And at the moment on this, we have no new growths. No new growths at all. We do have some new roots coming out down here and there. And they are off the growth with the blooms on. Um, so, nothing much going on with this at the moment. Chances are it's going to come back into growth when the blooms actually fade. Um, some cattleya types take a bit of a rest after blooming where nothing happens. But this one started roots anyway, so... Uh, these, this is the, probably the oldest bulb on the plant. The two leaves on there are going to drop off anytime soon. That's the nature of cattleyas. We had a very feeble wheat growth over this side. I'm hoping it still grows another one this year that puts on a bit of size. So This one had, had the problem with the roots. It has started to recover. I won't say it's recovered, but it's certainly started. So this is the first real water that these have had for some time. As I said, they've been getting a sprayer, and you just can't get this volume of water in the pot from a sprayer. If you think, I'd probably just pour two litres through that pot, if not more. So, you know, and although this will be diluted now, I'm still going to do it on the base. Just get down the pseudo bulbs, let it run down. And even if it only gets some of them, some of them's better than none of them. And then next time. See, to do this properly, I really ought to do the, um, so I'm just getting the leaf joints where they are. I flood the leaf joint 
till it runs out, so I know it's got more. Um, to do this properly, all the leaves ought to be sprayed top side, bottom side, and then it would work systemically over time. That type of spray that I'm doing is contact only, because it's not going to soak into pseudo bulbs, that's for sure. Right, now this is the bright red one. Now what we've got here is we do have one, <laughs> so I'm pointing it at the shelf instead of the camera, we do have one nice new growth coming here. I would expect a second one. I'm sure this had two leads. But at the moment we have one strong new growth. It hasn't long finished blooming. It has bloomed recently. And around the base of that new growth and the previous growth we do have some new roots. We also have a few new roots over the other side of the plant. Scale on this one? Not a lot at all. Not a lot at all. Well, I've just seen this... Uh remnants of a sheath down here and on that tiny little bit where that sheath is there's loads of them you really have got to get your sheaths off on catlias if you get scale if you've never had them you watch very 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 carefully every new plant you get because if you've never had them they won't just turn up they'll come in on a plant so they'll come in from somebody else right so that one's um, got a new growth coming not bad Scale, next to nothing, and not up on the leaves. On cattleyas, um, they're quite strong plants. The pseudobulbs are quite strong and quite sturdy. And although the scale can do a bit of damage to them, they don't really do that much. The damage is done on the leaf joints, basically, where they weaken them quite severely. So uh, again, I'll just I'll just let, us, let a bit of spray run down the pseudo bulbs. There's not many on there, so I'm not going to go mad. That'll do. So that's that one. So that one wasn't badly affected by the um, root treatment, and it didn't have that bad a scale. But that's not really recovering. That's doing what it normally does. Now let's have a look at these things because these are not doing very well. He says. <laughs> What these need doing is watering more often. I put them in here with some moss and some large bark to see if they would grow. Now this is what you've got to look for. You see them right at the base of that leaf, there's a cluster. Now the spray won't get into that cluster, they generate like a waxy surface. So what you do when you find ones like that is you rub them with your finger and kill them. <laughs> and make sure you haven't left any. <laughs> As I said, if you can see them, kill them. So that, that's got, you probably won't be able to see it, that's got a new growth coming down in there. So that's its first sign of life since I put it in that sort of pot. And I don't know what it is. When I um, had a good go at the catleas, I threw some out, I split some up, tried to deal with the scale, and what happened was um, the tags either got lost, deliberately or unintentionally but somehow or other all the tags got mislaid and I don't care. I've thrown a couple out and I don't know which ones they were so I have a list of catlias in my notes but it's not true because there's one or two items in my notes that are missing. They've been thrown out and I don't know which ones they are. So I'm just waiting for what I've got left to bloom. There's lots of scale on that one. But they're um, in a place where I can just, like I said, just wipe them with your thumb and squish them. Don't let them get up. Don't rely on the spray. If you can see them, kill them. Use the spray for the bits you can't get at. Yeah, this one's bad. Really bad. Yes, very bad. And again, this is lack of handling. I haven't seen them, so they've been allowed to multiply a bit. But uh, we'll get the spray, let it run down again. There's a couple of adults on the leaves, not many. So they're not, uh, not climbing too much. I haven't got a clue what that is. The last thing that happened on that was this growth here. There's no sign of life on this. No new roots and no new growths. So. This one has been in limbo for some considerable time. We are getting the daytime temperatures now. So 
it might come back into growth. This one, I think, isn't going to make it. Being practical, I don't think this one's going to make it. that's doing the job properly but uh, something's better than nothing until I what I really need to do is get like a, um, some cotton wool buds or something or other and just attack these and get every single scale that's visible out or get something that really kills them on contact which at the moment I've got no access to right this one this one's been sitting doing nothing for a very long time it's growing a new growth here and there are roots. I don't want to tip it up because the bark will come out. And then under this cane here is another new growth starting with some new roots. So although this one doesn't look good with its pale leaves on the old pseudo bulbs, it hasn't got much scale on it and it has got two new growths and it is starting roots. That one will make it. What it is, I don't know. We'll find out one day perhaps. Maybe one of these two new growths will actually produce some blooms. But I think what's needed to do with cat beers now is they need a watering like this, a good soaking, every two or three days. If we're going to have this warmer weather like this and the brighter sort of sunshine during the day, then, you know, the, these are going to dehydrate if they don't get really hydrated properly and a, a sprayer doesn't do that. Right, and then here, one of the biggies now, this is my, uh, this has got a tag, and even if it didn't have, I'd know what it was, and the size of the flipping things, Lelia perforata, variety striata. Now these do have a period of non-growth, that's normal, so when this one's not growing at all, I don't worry too much, but technically it has two leads, one of them has started a nice new growth. Now the last two new growths that this produced are weak, they're slender, they're not fat like some of the older ones, so it wasn't doing well. But again, it had a root issue, and what we've got now is some root growth in sort of, there's root tips showing in some places, so it's coming back to life just about, but there should be another lead over this side of the plant. It is in effect two plants, so there should be two leads. One is doing okay and the other one isn't, but we'll see how it goes. Now this one had the root issue to a degree, hasn't been repotted for a while and doesn't need to be. see what happens with that one. But I am going to have to start picking up on the watering on these if I expect them to recover. Oh, God. You're going to hate me for doing this. This leaf joint here, right down in the leaf joint, is absolutely full of scale. And the only way to get at them is with something sharp and pointed, and I'm going to use my scissors. And I'm just Because they'll have that waxy coating, I need to break it before I put the spray in. So I'm just doing that. I hope I haven't cut into the leaf. And then we can put the spray on. And there we go. And there's virtually nothing down the bottom, so I'm not going to bother. That's that one. One of the biggies. Only a couple more now. Um, this is Lelia Anceps. This one did struggle. And it's coming out of its struggle in as much as it has grown some new roots on this side of the plant. And I can just say, I was just going to say, but it hasn't started its new growth yet. But actually, yes, it has. In under that sheath there is the new growth. Yeah, so there's one. There might be a second one. Um, it is capable of producing two for one. And um, the other side of the plant isn't. So we'll have to see what happens. Um, but we've got quite a bit of root activity now. So this one's coming back into growth. Um, there's a little bit of scale on that leaf. Apart from that, there isn't any. So this just needs that one leaf done, just down in the joint. So uh, we'll go with that. Did 
should I say, this is Lelia, Lelia Anceps. Quite a large plant, relatively easy to grow, relatively easy to bloom, and the blooms are what you'd call eventually, because the spikes are absolutely enormous, at least a metre long. So they take quite a long time, you know, from the point they start until the point the buds form, and they are tall. They don't normally need staking. Uh, right, this is another one that was uh, just a piece broken off. I don't believe that's going to make it. All of the leaves are dehydrated, they're all yellowing, and there's no sign of life. There's also no scale. <laughs> but we'll carry on. And if I go into a regime of a good soaking on these more frequently, um, this might put up a new growth. Because it's only hope, because the old growths are failing. So that, that one's not going to make it unless it can produce a new growth. Right, one more. Got no more room up there. And um, I was going to say I'm really out of water, but I'm not. And this is the last one. Um, to say this one's got a new growth would be an understatement. That's a Catlia new growth. That's what they're supposed to look like on the larger Catlias. Um, not really much scale on this at all. And lots and lots of new root activity. All the older roots are shooting out and there are new roots coming from the base of some of the pseudo bulbs and the new growth will produce a complete new set of roots. So this one's doing fine. This one never had the scale treatment on the roots to, to mess up the roots. So uh, this one's been, I wouldn't say it's been bought in recently, but it is a recent purchase relative to some of the others anyway. So we're doing okay here. Now this, this just needs pushing now. It's got a new growth. Um, it's got roots. And it's not badly affected by scale, so th this one should get going. But to do that, this is in the, the large rock hard bark, and with a clay pot, the combination of the two means that it dries out ridiculously fast. Especially in this period, it's a period of about two, two and a half hours. Sort of, um, it's after midday, and it's when the sun comes over the roof before it hides behind next door's house. And during that period, we are getting heat in here now. We're getting to the point where I'm seriously thinking of, of just draping a layer of shade netting over this half of the roof. Just to stop this, what is in effect, quite fierce heat. Which is no good for the plants. If the leaves feel quite warm to the touch, they're dehydrating badly. Whether you can see it or not, they are. You can overcome that by keeping them very well watered, which I haven't been doing. You can spray your leaves, but don't create a shock. Don't use freezing cold water on leaves that feel quite warm to the touch. That is a shock. It doesn't do them any good at all. So, uh, yeah, I wouldn't say these are doing good. I call them a motley crew, my catlias, because they are. I wouldn't say that any of these are doing brilliantly, but some of them are doing better than they have been. <laughs> so that's an Im I'll class that as an improvement, even though it's not good. Um, and some of them, at least two, I don't think are going to make it. We shall see. We shall see. As I say, that one that I just put up there has got two quite yellow leaves, but it does have quite strong new growth as well. So that one will make it. But it's going to be years before these look like good plants again. We shall see. And the one that has the red blooms isn't too bad. That one's not too bad at all. So uh, those are they. We've now had a good soaking. And they need that more often. Now, while we get this weather, they need that quite frequently. <laughs> I have to thread that one in so that I can see the blooms and not knock everything over. Right, so there we go, those are the catlias. There are more catlias mounted than are left in the holy clay pots, so um, that's not my catlia collection by any means. But a lot of the, ma the ones that are mounted, they are catlias but, or catlia types. There is quite a large lalia mounted and there's also quite a few 
along the lines of brassavolas. Yeah, they've got brassavola in them, so they tend to be more like those strappy ones with the rounded pseudo bulbs. Anyway, I said we'd have a look at those. I won't say that's a brilliant set of plants because it's not. Um, <laughs> they were once and they're not now and maybe they will be again some of them and some of them definitely won't so uh, we'll run with that that sun is moving across now there's only half of that roof left in the sun and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to open the window and the door the door to the lounge is already open that has a cooling effect the lounge is only 21 22 degrees if I open the window and the door it will create a through draft which will pull some cooler air out of the lounge. In 10 minutes time I'll have lost the heat in here and by then the sun will be moving across so I can drop this heat quite quickly and I need to get that fly out of the door because that's annoying me already. Right, see you next time. Thanks for dropping by. Not a happy video that one when you look at the whole set of plants that are not that good. <laughs> You can't, well, maybe some people can, but I can't do well with all, cat, uh, all orchid types. And the types that are going to do well here are probably different to the ones that did well around the other place. We shall see. You need a whole year to make those decisions. Yes, cat, you want to come in now, do you? <laughs> see you next time. Thanks for dropping by.